Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this deep dive video, we're going to take a look at the Iron Jaws for Warcry. In this video, we'll be taking all our information from the Harbingers of Destruction Warcry Supplement Book, and we'll be working our way through it, having a little look about the Auric War Clans and the Iron Jaws in particular, finding out a little bit about their background and how they fit into the world of Warcry. Then we'll go through the fighter abilities and the leader abilities and all the individual leaders and fighters and the cards. We'll look at all the statistics and then after that, as we go through the video, we'll work our way through all the models available on the Games Workshop website and we'll match those models up with the relevant fighter cards. Let's get started and take a little look at the background for the Auric Warclans. Brutish and bellicose, the Auric race lives only for war. These green-skinned marauders have fought all across the mortal realms and are never happier than when they are in the midst of utter carnage. The Iron Jaws are despoilers and destroyers, and were they to have their way, the realms would be reduced to barren wastelands in which the creed of the Oryx would reign supreme. Armoured brutes, eager ard boys, and mounted gore grunters mass around the mightiest bosses. Gibbering spell flingers and raging war chanters channel the power of war, driving the boys onwards to crash into the terrified foe. Many Iron Jaws warbands, sometimes known as crusher mobs for their vandalizing tendencies, have begun targeting monoliths raised by the warlords of the Bloodwind Spoil, knocking over and defacing these structures with brutish glee in order to attract the attention of the toughest enemies. That's a brief introduction to the Iron Jaws, so now let's dive in and start looking at those abilities, the fighter cards, and all the models available. And let's begin with the fighter abilities. And these two abilities that you can see here can be used by any of the members of the Warband with the Iron Jaws rune mark. I'll go through these now, and then we don't have to do it for each model as we see them. So the first one is a double called Charge, and a fighter can use this ability only if there is a visible enemy fighter within six inches of them. This fighter makes a bonus move action and must finish closer to the closest visible enemy fighter than they were at the start of that action. So this really sums up what these Iron Jaws are all about. They want to charge into battle, get close to the enemy and dish out some punishment. And so this double ability really sets that up. And then the second ability that they can use is a quad called Rampaging Destroyer. Until the end of this fighter's activation, add one to the attacks characteristic of attack actions made by this fighter. In addition, each time an enemy fighter is taken down by an attack action made by this fighter, this activation, this fighter can make a bonus move action. This will be the second ability that gives us a good idea about what the Iron Jaws are all about. And so here, once they can get that extra attack and they can take down a fighter, they're then empowered to move forward and start advancing towards the next enemy. But for me, adding one to the attacks characteristic of attack actions made by the fighter for the whole activation is pretty good. But for a quad, I don't think you're getting a huge amount of value here for this. And if you don't take an enemy down, uh, enemy down during um, an attack action made by this act fight, this activation, then you're not going to be able to get that bonus move action. So I wonder whether it would be better to use the regular universal quad where you get a bonus move and a bonus attack action. I think that might be a better option, but I guess it depends on the situation really. But I think for me, I'm not too impressed with this Rampage and Destroyer quad, and I think I'd prefer to go for the universal one. Next, we've got the leader abilities, and there's one leader ability that all the leaders with the Iron Jaws rune mark can use, and this is a triple called Wa. Add the value of this ability to the move characteristic of friendly fighters within six inches of this fighter when this fighter uses this ability until the end of the battle round. So with this ability, depending on the fighters you choose, I mean, if you're going for Ard Boys, then I think this would be a great ability because they'd all bunch together and that would be a good tactic to really swarm the enemy and really get stuck in. And so if you can add the value of this ability, the move characteristic of a good amount of the friendly fighters who are within six inches of this fighter, then I think this could be a really good ability. Certainly if you're getting fives or sixes, as the ability value then I think you could put this to good use and it plays into that narrative of really driving forward and really advancing towards the enemy to do battle. 
But now we've looked at the fighter abilities and the leader abilities, now let's start looking at all the models available and then matching them up with their relevant fighter cards and we'll go through all the statistics and then the extra abilities that each fighter can use. And our first fighter is going to be a leader and this is the Oruk Mega Boss. And you can pick this miniature up on his own for £25, quite a lot for one model, but let's see what we get with the fighter cards. And we'll also look at some ideas we can proxy for different models later on and save a bit of money. But here's our Oruk Mega Boss coming in at 285 points, so he's going to be our highest value fighter for this uh, warband. And he's going to get a movement of 3, toughness 5 and can take 38 wounds. He's got two rune marks, the leader rune mark and one other, so he's gonna get an ability of his own. And with his weapon, it's a range of one. He can make three attacks, strength six, dealing a huge four to eight on a crit. So this guy can certainly dish out some damage. He's super strong, super tough, can take it, but that four to eight is pretty impressive. But let's have a look at this ability that he's gonna be able to use. And this is a quad called Mighty War. Add the value of this ability to the move characteristics of friendly fighters within 9 inches of this fighter when this fighter uses this ability until the end of the battle round. So this is the same as that triple that he can also use, which is the triple WA leader ability. And so this is just going to extend that move characteristic uh, ability there from within 6 inches to 9 inches. So he can certainly cover a bit more uh, the area on the battlefield. And 9 inches is quite a large space on a war cry board so it could be pretty useful so putting this guy in there is really going to start driving all those fighters forward our next fighter is the war chanter and this is coming in at 18 pound 50 again pretty expensive for one model but if you want this war chanter there's some other ways we can get him and we'll go through that later in the video and this war chanter is a great leader option coming at 230 points again got that movement of three so these guys certainly aren't fast Toughness 5 can take 35 wounds. He's got two rune marks, the leader and one other. And then his weapon is a range of 1, can make 4 attacks, strength 4, dealing 2 to 4 on a crit. So he certainly doesn't put out as much damage and isn't as strong, but he's tough and can really absorb some wounds. But for those 230 points, we'd be hoping for a really good ability from this leader. So as well as the triple WA that he's going to be able to use, let's have a look at the next ability. And this is a double called War Chanter's Beat. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the attacks characteristics of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. And now this is a great ability. For a double, this is really good. And again, getting him in amongst a group of hard boys would be awesome. And being able to add one to the attack characteristic of all their attack actions during their activation would be awesome. And so you've got to be friendly fighters within six inches. They don't even have to be visible. So I think this is a really great ability and probably my favorite of all the leader abilities so far. Our next leader option is the Weird Knob Shaman, and this is coming in at £20. Again, quite a lot for one miniature, um, but I really like this guy. Shamans really stand out to me. So let's have a look at his card, and he's coming at 235 points. Again, we've got that movement 3, toughness 4, can take 35 wounds. He's got the leader rune mark and that mystic rune mark, so he's going to get another ability. And we've got two weapon options. The first is like the magic kind of weapon at range with a minimum distance of three, maximum seven. So you can't use this if anyone is within three inches. You can get two attacks, strength three, dealing three to six on a crit. So very standard for a kind of shaman mystic figure. Then the second ability, if you, uh, weapon, sorry, up close, is a range of two, so up to two, three attacks, strength four, dealing one to four on a crit. So he's not going to do a huge amount of damage here, but toughness 4 is okay, and he can certainly take the wounds, but he's not very fast at all. So for 235 points, you're not getting a great deal here, but let's see what that mystic ability is going to do for this fighter. And this is a triple called Foot of Gork. Pick a visible enemy fighter within 12 inches of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each 2 to 5, allocate 1 damage point to that fighter, for each six, allocate three damage points to that fighter. So here we go. This is pretty good. You know, 12 inch range is really great. So you can do some damage from a distance. Keep this guy out of there and start using this triple. Quite often, I would imagine, you know, there's a good chance you get a few triples in a game. 
And so this could be pretty useful. And if you start getting fives or six as your ability value, you can certainly do some damage on a single fighter. Now we're coming away from the single miniatures and starting to look at some of the sets. And here we have the Gore Grunters, and these are coming in at £48, the RRP, and you're going to get three models in here. And this is going to give you quite a few options for fighter types. And the first one is a leader, and this is the Gore Grunter boss with Jagged Gore Hacker. And at 255 points, pretty high for a leader, but he is mounted. So you can see he's got the leader room mark, the beast room mark, and the mounted room mark. The mounted room mark's not going to give him an ability, but it tells us he's riding this beast. He's got a movement of 8, toughness 4, can take 40 wounds. His weapon is a range of 2, 3 attacks, strength 5, dealing 2 to 5 on a crit. So this guy can put some damage out, cover some ground, and can absorb it too. So this is really good. But we've also got another leader option, which is the Gore Grunter boss with Pig Iron Chopper. So you can make it either of these with this set. And this one's 250 points. You've got a movement 8, toughness 4, 40 wounds, the same room marks we've just seen. And with this guy, it looks like we've got a different weapon, so this is a range 1. So now we can make 4 attacks, strength 5, dealing 2 to 5 on a crit. So we can make that extra attack there with this one. So this could be a really good option. Uh, as well as that, we can also make an Auric Gore Grunter with Jagged Gore Hacker, or an Auric Gore Grunter with Pig Iron Chopper. So we get two options for fighters here, and they're going to get... The same rune marks as we've seen with the leaders, except for the leader rune mark. Coming in at 205 and 210 points with the same movement 8, toughness 4, and they can both take 35 wounds. And then we're looking at the difference in weapons. One's a range 2, so you're only making 2 attacks, but the strength is 5, dealing 2 to 4 on the crit. And then the next one is a range of 1, so you can make that extra attack, 3 attacks. But the strength's not as high at 4, but the damage output is the same at 2 to 4. So 4 nice options from this set of 3 miniatures. And all 4 of those are going to be able to use this fighter ability. The two leaders can le uh, use the triple war ability, but the only other one they got is this triple called Gore Grunter Charge. And until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter finishes a move action, within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter. Allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So this is a really great one. Anytime you're on a beast, you're going to see this kind of ability come up. And I think, you know, once you're getting in there and charging, you're getting within one inch of an enemy fighter, you pick another one and then you deal them damage equal to the value of the ability. So a nice five or six value here would certainly put some damage on one fighter. But for a triple, maybe a little bit high, really. Um, but still really nice to do some damage and really nice and simple ability. Our next box set are the Brutes, and these are going to come in at £32.50, and you're going to get five miniatures. And again, you're going to get a nice mix of leaders and fighters here. So although there's only five in the box, you've got a nice selection, and it's great for Warcry. The first one is a Brute Boss with Boss Claw and Brute Smasher. And this one's coming in at 250 points, got Movement 3, Toughness 5, can take 35 wounds. We've got the Leader Rune Mark and two other Rune Marks, so we're going to get some abilities. The weapon is a range 1, 4 attacks, strength 5, dealing 2 to 5 on a crit. So this guy's pretty tough too. Um, you know, 35 points less than a mega boss, but he can certainly do some damage here. So this could be a viable option. And he's got some different abilities and one more ability than the mega boss. So this could be a really good one to think about using. But let's see what the ability is. And this is a triple called De Grab and Bash. Pick a visible enemy fighter within 1 inch of this fighter and roll a dice. On a 3 plus, until the end of the battle round, that fighter cannot make actions, or move actions, sorry, or disengage actions. In addition, on a 6, this fighter can make a bonus attack action against that fighter. Okay, so there's a few things that have to work here. You know, First of all, you pick a fighter within 1 inch, then roll a dice. You have to get a 3 plus to make anything happen and then on the six you get that bonus so a lot of conditions there for a triple so this could well not even work so i'm not sure about this one but we've got another leader option called a brute boss with boss chopper and this one's 255 points so for five points more let's see what we get we get movement three toughness five 35 wounds that's the same we've got two room marks we've got one less room mark here but the attacks is a range one we can make three attacks the strength is 6, and the damage output is 3 to 6 on a crit. So for that extra 5 points, we lose an ability, we lose 1 attack dice, but we gain 1 point in strength, 
and we certainly gain in that damage output too. So here's another great option if you want to really do some damage and punish your enemy. From this set we can also make a regular fighter, the Auric Brute with Gore Chopper, and for 200 points we get a movement 3, toughness 5, 25 wounds. So you can really see these are all going to be tough, these Iron Jaws. With that armor they're really strong. We've got the one room mark, so we're going to get an ability. And with the weapon, it's a range of one, making three attacks, strength five, dealing three to six on a crit. So for 200, this is nice, pretty tough, can certainly deal some damage, and is quite strong too at five. So this would be a pretty tough opponent to go up against. We can also make an Auric Brute with pair of Brute Choppers. And this is a little bit less at 180 points. We still get that room mark. The movement, toughness, and damage he can take are the same, but the damage output's going down now. So here we've got a weapon range of one, we can make four attacks, strength four, dealing two to four on a crit. So for 180, you do lose a little bit, but having four attacks, strength four, dealing two to four is always nice, and being able to take 25 hits at toughness five makes this a really tough customer. You've also got an option to make an Oruk Brute with Jagged Gore Hacker. And at 180 points, we've still got that rune mark. We've got the movement 3, toughness 5, and we can take 25 wounds. So that's the same. But here, the weapon range is 1. We're making 3 attacks, strength 5, dealing 2 to 4 on a crit. So we lose an attack. We can only make 3 attack dice, but we gain in strength. So this one's a little bit stronger, and the damage output's going to be the same. So for the same amount of points, just weigh up whether you want to lose an attack dice and gain in strength, or have more attacks with the strength a little bit lower. But now let's have a look at the ability that all these fighters that we've just looked at here can use. And this is a double fighter ability called Duff Up the Big Thing, which is probably the best name for any of these abilities so far. And until the end of the bat this fighter's activation, add two to the attacks and strength characteristics of attack actions made by this fighter that have a range characteristic of three or less and that target an enemy fighter with a wounds characteristic of 15 or more. All right, so this is really, yeah, like it says, duff up the big thing. You've got to pick those big leaders, those big monsters, big fighters, and then you can add two to your attack and strength characteristic and really dish out some punishment on those big beasts. So I love this ability, but it's got that condition. Our next box set to look at are the Ard Boys, and these are £35 for a set. And so you're going to get a lot more in here now. You're going to get 12 miniatures all together so a lot better value for the money and they're just a little bit smaller but not that much smaller and here's the first one you're going to get a leader option which is the ard boy boss with ard boy choppers and he's at 190 points and he's got movement three toughness four can take 25 wounds he's got that leader room mark for the triple war ability and then he's got a weapon range one can make four attacks strength five dealing two to five on a crit. So this is a nice option, 190, maybe not as a leader, but certainly as a hero who can pack a punch. This might be an option, but definitely need to compare him to the others. But with no extra abilities, I think as a leader option, certainly not a good idea. Now we're on to the fighters and we've got the Auric Ardboy with Ardboy choppers at 110 points. And now these are getting lower in point value now with a movement three, toughness four, and 15 wounds they can take. Weapon range 1, 4 attacks, strength 4, dealing 1 to 4 on a crit. So not as much damage output now as the points go down, but still taking a decent amount of wounds there at 15. And the next option is an Auric Ardboy with Ardboy Big Chopper, and he's 110 points. And again, 3 movement, 4 toughness, 15 wounds. Weapon range of 1, he can make 3 attacks, strength 4, and a little bit uh, more in damage output with a 2 to 4 on a crit. And then we've got another option, which is the Auric Ardboy with Ardboy Chopper and Auric Forge Shield. So a little bit more for 125 points, but for that, you're going to get movement 3, extra toughness at 5 and 15 wounds. You've got the Bulwark Room Mark, so you're going to get an ability. This is the only fighter here that gets an extra ability. And the weapon range is 1, 3 attacks, strength 4, dealing 1 to 4 on a crit. So for 125 points, you get that extra toughness, less attacks, but we're going to get the ability. So let's have a look now, and this is a double called Shield Bash. After this fighter's next move action, this activation, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a dice. On a four to five, allocate one damage point to that fighter. On a six, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of the ability. 
So we've got like a condition here that they do have to move. So they can't just make this if they do two attack actions during their activation and they have to get a four or five to do any damage at all. And a six is going to do a lot more. So a few conditions there, not the, one of the best abilities, but certainly handy to have. But now let's look at another set that we can get. And these are the Warhammer Underworld's Beast Grave set called Morgox Crushers. And you're going to get three miniatures in here for £22.50. And this could be an idea of proxy in one of the miniatures for the Oruk Mega Boss. He's going to be probably maybe or a little bit smaller. Um, but I think when you consider the price, that Mega Boss is £25. You save quite a bit here. And I think you could also use one of them, that same one, as a Brute Boss with the Claw and Brute Smasher. And, you know, he's not going to have the Claw, but you would just proxy him for that. And I think you could also choose the Brute Boss with Boss Chopper. So you've got a few options there of what you could use. And then with the regular fighters as well, you could go with an Auric Brute with a pair of Brute Choppers. I know they've got clubs, but just proxying those models out. And then Auric Brute with Jagged Gore Hacker or an Auric Brute with Gore Chopper. So I think this little set for 2250 is going to give you a few other options and potentially save you a little bit of money. And also, if you don't want to buy um, 10 or 5 Brutes for 35 you could just pick up 3 for £22.50 here. Another option we've got are the Iron Jaws Iron Skulls boys. And for £15, you're going to get 4 miniatures here. And these are from a set for Warhammer Underworlds again that were released with Shadespire. And these won't come with the cards, you'll just get the models. But with these, I think you can use an Ard Boy boss with Ard Boy Chopper as one of them. And so you could proxy one for that. And also with the others, you've got the Auric Ard Boy with Ard Boy Choppers. You've got an Auric Ard Boy with Ard Boy Big Chopper. So you've got three options here again. So, you know, if you wanted to double up on a couple of those, then you could certainly do that. And I think they're really fun. And if you only want a few models, you don't want to go paying that 32.50 to get 12, then this is an option too. But I think one of the best value for the Iron Jaws is to go with a start collecting set. And sometimes these start collecting sets aren't perfect for Warcry, but I think this is an exception. This is a really great set. And if you haven't got any Warcrys and are looking to uh, any Iron Jaws and are looking to get started with them in Warcry, then I think this start collecting set is a great way to go. The RRP on this is £60, but I'll put a link later on that you'll see where you can save up to 20% on this so you can get a great discount. And it's actually over £100 worth of miniatures in this set. So I think this is one of the best value start collecting ones you can get. And in there, you're going to get a nice set of different miniatures. You're going to get a War Chanter, three or Auric Gore Grunters, and ten Auric Ard Boys. So here we go. Here's the three different sets you're going to get. You're going to get that single war chanter then you're going to get the set of hard boys and then you're going to get those gore grunters these aren't to scale so they're all going to be different sizes to this where compared but just from this start collecting set these are all the different fighter options you're going to get you're going to get the war chanter and then with the gore grunters you can go with the boss the other boss and then you can also with the um hard boys you can have an hard boy boss with hard boy choppers and then you can go with five fighter types from the Gore Grunters and the Choppers. So you've got a lot of options here. You could have your War Chanter as a leader and then maybe pick one of the others as a hero if you wanted to. And then you've got plenty of options for fighters. And you know, with this set, you're, you're gonna get a load of points. You know, you could easily do a thousand with just four miniatures. So certainly a lot of points here. And for playing a campaign, I think this would be a great option to go with. There are some other models and we've got Gordrak, the Fist of Gork here, and we've also got a Mega Boss on a Moor Crusher, and this will be the same set. So you'll pay £70 for this model, unless you get the discount with the link I'll give you later on, and, but you can make them in either of these two varieties. Now, using them in Warcry is going to be pretty tough, but I think you could look at the Destruction book, Warcry book, and then maybe even just take the Skitterstrand Arachnarok um, stats and use that and I think this would be a good way of being able to include a monster in your campaign warband. Then we've also got this beast, the Kragnos, and so if you wanted to include him in it, this is a bit of a push really. I get £100 for this model, you get the discount on this too at Element Games, um, but maybe you could you could um, sub him for an Aeol Guzzler Gargant or just create your own um, abilities and Warcry Fighter card to accompany him, I think that would work too. But if you want to use these models, then just proxying them for some of the existing fight cards is no problem. And you can find the ones available in the Monsters and Thrall section of all the different Warcry supplement books for the different Grand Alliances. So you've got lots of options there. 
I picked up a copy of the War Cry Iron Jaws box set, but sadly this isn't available anymore. You might find it in your local game store, but online, really hard to get hold of now. Um, so that would be a great place to start. But I think if I didn't have that, then I would go straight for the Start Collecting Iron Jaws set. And then I would add in the Warhammer Underworlds Morgox Crushers. So I think that Start Collecting set is just missing some Brutes. So if I could add some Brutes with this small Warhammer Underworld set, I think £82.50, you'll get a discount at Element Games on that of up to 20%, and that's a great starting point. But here's all the fighter types you would get from having just those two sets. You'd get an Auric War Chanter or a proxied Auric War Boss. And so, you know, here we've got 12, 14 different fighter types. So this isn't bad at all. And when you consider that altogether there are 16 in the set, in the whole Iron Jaws warband, you know, you're getting most of them just from these two sets. So I think this is a good way to go. And all the different fighters with the red outline are from that Underworld set and the rest are from the Start Collecting set. And so if you're interested in picking up some sets for your Iron Jaws to get started with Warcry, or even if you play Age of Sigmar, then Element Games is the place to go in the UK. And I'll put a link in the description below that will take you there. And with that link, you can save up to 20%. It is an affiliate link, but it won't cost you anything extra. In fact, you can save that money. And for every sale made through an affiliate link, I get a small commission, and that helps me develop the channel, do more videos like this. And so I really appreciate you supporting me and the channel. And thanks so much for that. It's really great. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there. I'd love to hear what you think about the Iron Jaws. Maybe you played them already or perhaps this is a war band you're interested in picking up. So join in in the comments below. It'd be great to hear your thoughts. And I really hope you enjoyed the video and this gave you a good idea about what the Iron Jaws are all about and maybe how you could get started building your own warband. But thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit that notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.